got to be watchful and mindful of our parishioners uh, and all that. And I'm just trying to figure out another way to, I can't do it because people come in later on. I'm going to lock that door, actually, y'all. Huh? We might do that. We might adapt to that. Yeah, we might we might lock put Yeah, you know lock that, okay, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might go lock the door a certain time. Just have some somebody back in the door to let those who come in uh, after uh, the door has been locked. Really? At the uh, last week. 
Like when I talked about he came and gave him uh, change of clothes, uh, Gatorade to give him some electrolytes and all this stuff. <laughs> he refreshed him in every way that Paul needed to be refreshed. <laughs> and it's a, it's a true friend because Paul had a lot of people he associated with. But here, Onishwaris came to his uh, aid uh, to help him out in his imprisonment. When nobody else would come, he came. He showed up. I'm using another phrase. He showed up, and not only did he show up, he showed out. <laughs> he showed kindness. Watch it. And he also showed mercy to Paul. Now watch Paul prays in verse 16 that God grant his household mercy. But on the flip side, Onesiphorus gave him mercy by refreshing him. He gave him compassion. He showed compassion to Paul in, while he was in prison. Well, I want to really, I, I want to emphasize something here. In verse 16, notice he keep, I keep saying this, he prays for Onesiphorus' household that they may have mercy. <laughs> I want to keep saying it again. He prays for his household that they may have mercy. I use a word, y'all hear me all There's going to be a shift in the next verse or two. <laughs> There's going to be a shift. There's going to be a dip. He's going to do, he's going to say, he's going to have a different phrase later on in the next verse or two. Because in those 16, he asked for mercy for his household. So in his household, he asked for mercy for his, his kids. His, I don't know if he's married. I'm just going to say that because he didn't say he was married. I'll just say everybody in his house. Let's just do that way. <laughs> he, had, he asked for mercy that God will grant him mercy in his whole house. All of his house. Uh, he asked for mercy and all compassion for his house. Now watch this. <laughs> he was not ashamed of Paul's imprisonment. Paul Pray for him. Watch verse 17. Verse 17 says, and I like verse 17, y'all. Because this really shows a real freedom. This will show, this is going to show a real true freedom. Verse 17. Verse 17 says, but when he arrived in Rome, there was a function for his arrival in Rome. In Rome. Watch. He sought me out very zealously. King James, I believe, said diligently. Is that right? Yeah. Diligently. <laughs> and found me. Notice what he's saying here. First of all, and you see in verse uh, 19, Onephorus was from Ephesus. He was an efficient. He leaves Ephesus to come to Rome to seek out Paul. Watch this, to find him. He doesn't just try to find him, he diligently finds him. He carefully seeks out Paul to find out where he's in prison at. Oh, watch this. He goes after him. Everybody else leaves him. Everybody else forsakes him. But he goes diligently, seeks him out to help a brother out. That's a friend. That's a friend. He uses it. This is not going to be practical, okay? He uses all his monies, travel expenses, to find him in Rome in prison. He goes, loose practical, practical again, he goes, hey man, do you know what Paul's in? Hey girl, have you, have you, have you heard what Paul is in prison at? He seeks him out to find out where he's at. <laughs> Watch this. Not only did he use all his financial resources and his travel expenses, 
but he also risked his own life to find another brother, to have another brother out. He, God says, he forsakes himself. He forgets all about him, self, and worries about another brother. Oh, wow. We go home right there, y'all. We go home right there. He forgets all about himself and worries about another brother. <laughs> Watch it. He said, it's really not about me. It's about my fellow brother or my fellow sister that I help a brother out or a sister out. He shows mercy to a fellow brother. He's already been praying for, for mercy in his household, but he shows mercy to another brother. Paul, watch this. Watch this. I'm almost done, y'all. Believe it or not. Watch this. Onephus was committed to a specific spiritual and practical ministry toward Paul. Watch this. Spiritual? No, no says first. Spiritual. Now, watch this. Paul is writing all these letters, and Paul should be already spiritually strong. Not necessarily. <laughs> he comes refresh him. Really, he comes refresh him spiritually. He comes to encourage him spiritually. Paul, keep writing. Man, you don't know how many lives you're touching in your writings. Paul, keep on writing. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to strengthen you spiritually, Paul. And not only am I to try to help you out in the practical needs of your uh, of what you need, for as clothing, uh, food, and, and drink, and all of that, I'm here to give you spiritual encouragement to keep on writing. Because you are touching lives, and you and your writing are changing lives, and you're turning people from their old ways to a new way in Jesus Christ. He gives them spiritual strength. <laughs> and when he really talks about refreshing, he really refreshes him spiritually. <laughs> every now and then, y'all, I don't care how long we've been in church, how long we've been walking with God, every now and then we need somebody to give us some spiritual strength. <laughs> we need somebody to text us or something. We need somebody, uh, uh, I don't know, all of this, y'all just have me out there. You know, Instagram and all that stuff. Just give, give a word of encouragement, a word of uplift. Because I don't care who we are, what our title is, we need spiritual refreshment. <laughs> and so he gives spiritual refreshment. And let me just be kind of calm and practical too. You know what I talked about? Gatorade gives you the electrolytes and all that stuff. He gives Paul spiritual Gatorade. Gives the spiritual electrolytes. Because he gives him more energy and energizes him. Because what his laws and his writings, he, re he refreshes him with the spiritual gathering or power. Gain. <laughs> oh, wow. And you'll stop me and tell me I'm going to add it, okay? Uh, as I stated earlier, Paul uh, Onephorus was a native of uh, Ephesus. He traveled. Diligent to seek out Paul. And watch this. When he uses the word diligent, he, he, he carefully goes after him. He carefully goes after Paul. And watch this. No matter what his circumstances was, he still needed to go and see Paul. Well, in the first century, made a, in the first century, made a very difficult time for people to see prisoners. But it did not matter to Onephus. He didn't care. He took a risk. Oh, he does this. He takes a risk. Again, I say, he forgets about himself. He takes a risk to go help and refresh a fellow brother. He takes a spiritual risk, a physical risk, uh, and all that to help a spiritual brother out. Visit him. Now watch this. He does not only visit him one time. He visits him. Watch this. He visits him on several occasions. Every now and then you need somebody to refresh you more than one time. I'm going to go to the end. It don't matter who you are. Your title, how long you've been in church, you need people periodically to give you spiritual refreshment or spiritual strength Amen. to encourage you, to uplift you, to undergird you. And when I use the word undergird, to hold you up. 
and keep you up. You need somebody to do that. Keep it, to keep you going. And he does this. Mm. I need somebody to read from the new from the new international version. Verse number 18. Anybody who has the international version on your, your device, you got it? Okay. Read from it. Very well, and how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. Watch it, he says, and how many ways? So, I mean, this, this was not just a one time thing. Many ways he helped him. Now, watch this. Who is, what is Onephorus' title? Anybody know? <laughs> she says, Mr. Dirt. And, and, and I, I would go with that. <laughs> I would go with that. Anybody else? What, 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 what's his title or what? What did he call? What did he call? Uh, the historian said that he may possibly be called a missionary. I'm going to make y'all laugh. You know what y'all tell me. <laughs> Anybody know who he is? Now, Mr. Brendan, tell me what his name means again. Listen what his name means again. He is a help bringer. That's what his name means. His name means help bring earth. I'm helping and I'm bringing. <laughs> but what else would he be? Even in today's time. And you ever laugh when I tell you? Was your head up? I, I'm just going out there. Okay, that's fine. When I read it, I called Deacon. Deacon, okay. She thinks a Deacon. She thinks a missionary. Anybody else? I mean, good. Sir, now, 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 when you use the word servant, go deeper. Please. <laughs> huh? Assist? Okay. And you're right. Because uh, a servant is one who serves. Or a sister or whatever. Yes. Mr. Two, yes. But I, it's, it's, when I tell you what it really, what it really was, y'all gonna laugh. Because each and every one of y'all are this person. Each and every one of y'all are. Chris. Oh, yeah, Chris. What else? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs>
before I go to 18 and 17. He spends all his energies trying to find Paul. He searches hard for Paul. He does not uh, lethargically search for him. He searches for him, as I said, carefully and hard for the Apostle Paul for where he was. He went, he, like I said, he spent all his energies, all his financial resources in travel uh, to, to find out where he was. He, he leads Ephesus to go to Rome and to just to find out and help him out in all those categories to help him out. In verse 17, before I go to 18. Okay, let's run to 18 then. 18, the last verse, says this. Now watch, I'm going to show you something, because I, 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 I went to 16 on purpose. But I'm going to show you something in verse 18 that's not in verse 16. But it almost says the same thing, but it uses a different word. Watch what they did. The Lord grant to him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day. And you know very well how many ways, watch it, how many ways <laughs> he ministered to me at Ephesus. He reflects, let me, let me, I'm going to start from the bottom up, okay? He reflects about how many ways he ministered to him in Ephesus. He looks at all these ways he ministered to me. Now, watch this. In Ephesus, where he's originally from, Onifers, was originally from there, he, did, he went all out of his way while he was even in his own hometown. He went all out to help him out. And Paul remembers this. He don't forget it. Because when somebody really truly helps you out, let me say that again, you shouldn't forget. You should forget when people are really uh, helping you out, uh, really ministering to you, strengthening you, encouraging you, uplifting you, and all that. You should never forget what they've done for you. You should always be appreciative. And this is what happened to Paul. Paul was very appreciative of him, ministering to him in Ephesus. Many times, many times, many times. Watch this. I'm going to show this comparison between 18 and 16. And Mr. Free, you see your thought? All right, don't lose it. Get to write it down. All right. And then I want to ask you a question. He says, in that day. What is in that day mean? What does that mean? He says, in that day. Now, I know some working from, working from, working from the bottom in that day, what does in that day mean? During that time. During that time. Okay. 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 Anybody else? 